world. Um, it's Wednesday, November 10th. Can you even believe it? <laughs> I can't even believe it. Uh, here's the deal. We, I'm snuggy in my little cave at the cabin and I'm with Joan Wolfram and Dara Williamson and we each have our little hidey hole. So here I am and I'm ever so grateful that John could figure out to get us higher speed up here so this is even possible. We're having a lot of fun and um, well, I'll, t I'll tell you what I'm doing. Nothing. <laughs> Just nothing. Actually, that's a little bit of a lie. I'll show you what I worked on uh, yesterday. It rained. Yay. So uh, one thing out the window this morning, Dara commented on, and then I went and looked, and we have deer everywhere. That particular shot, I went out on the back deck, and there were four, but then when I really looked, there were way more than that, and we couldn't find any bucks, but it's mommies and babies. Hey, Margo. So I want to show you this image. Uh, oh, first of all, we um, we met with Tomasita today and we have a video and she put together an amazing exhibit at Houston. So again, you didn't have to be there to see it. And if you did, you might want to watch it again. Oh, also John called up, not hysterical, but not thrilled that I chose the wrong file with Philippa on <laughs> Monday. He had spent two hours editing it and making it clean. And so he has now replaced it on YouTube. What you saw on Monday was the raw version. <laughs> the raw version. And Tomasita, I have to make sure we get the right version up because in the middle of hers, we just died laughing over some things. And so, Tomasita, I pray it's going to be okay. I think it is. So, here is uh, an image I want to show you. I've shown it before, but that is Sparrow's pitcher. It's her water pitcher. And gosh, John, I know you're watching. Make sure there's plenty of water in it. And uh, actually, that's what I gravitated to yesterday. I did a, a demo on thequiltshow.com, a segment with Sue's Spargo's permission of like the five things I learned from her class. Well, I'm going to tell you the sixth thing I've learned. I am addicted to her her way of working. And in fact, the kids, you know, wool is a little expensive. The kids want to know what to get me for Christmas. And I sent a link of one part on Sue Spargo's store. And I said, you two kids sort it out, but this is what I want. And if they work together, I will have all the colors in, I think, fat 16th or I forget. And that will run a hundred dollars together, which is 50 bucks a family, which is perfect. So here it is. Um, I'm working on it. And yesterday I worked on Rick Rack and I've never done that before. She um, puts down the Rick Rack with French knots. She has other ways she does it too, but I think that's pretty cool. I think when I'm going to go home though, I'm going to put fray check on the ends of the Rick Rack so that it doesn't fray. I'm having a ball. Now I want to tell you and what we're going to be doing in our stitch along. It is not going to be complicated stitches. If you want complicated stitches, then you go to Sue Spargo. And I think Lilo told me once that, well, she got to take an in-person class with her. And Sue said something to the effect of, if you learn two new stitches a day in her class, count it good. I am going to... Um, I am going to be going to the beginnings, but we will get smashing results. Okay, so Jeannie, okay, uh, hello Alex, were your ears burning last week? Joe Cunning and I were talking about you at Art Quilt Tahoe. I saw the quilt you did, had some hand quilting on with him. Yeah, that was fun. And I think we even had a video on that too. That was super fun. So here, here is another thing I have to bring up again. And that is, yes, we are keenly, sadly, so upset about the situation with email. It is not us. It is not you. It is Infusionsoft, who we go through. I'm going to start saying names. 
they know they've got a problem and it's not supposed to be fixed for a while. So John and Justin and some guy named Tuan in Vietnam is hell is we're trying to figure out how to work around it because it is killing us. It is killing us. Um, you can go to the front page. You can, um, you can click on and get the latest blog, but then there are things like this. We have something called uh, Sweet Treats, and it's Tuesday's Sweet Treat. And of course, it comes to you via email, perfect. And so um, it is for star members. And what we have going on right now, where's my thing, I'm gonna get this right. Um, Tuesday's Sweet Treat, I think through today, this is for star members, is you get 20% off all fat quarter bundles and kits. That is a sweet treat. So I am bringing you this via Pony Express, letting you know the information. And if you're sitting there going, doggone it, I am a star member and I'm not getting this, this is what you can do and we can give you an activation code. You are going to um, email Kristen at thequiltshow.com. Note how she spells her name. K-R-I-S-T-I-N and, and tell her you're a star member and that you want to go shopping and she will send you a coupon code. Okay, so please take advantage of that. We so appreciate our star members and what that means if you're new here, it's people who support us via thequiltshow.com and pay $49 a year to keep us in business. And of course you have access to all the shows and that, but we always try and come up with more added benefits and one is Tuesday's Sweet Treats. So the other cool thing that's happening today, I think I mentioned it earlier, but um, I'm going to be a guest at the Six No Dolls, okay? And um, it is $12. It runs about an hour, and the six know-it-alls are people who are historians, and my personal friends are Julie Silver and Barbara Brackman, but what basically we all do, well, not we, because I'm not a, I'm a so-it-all, I'm not a know-it-all, um, we take us, they take a subject matter and discuss it. Like for instance, Julie's was the swastika, and I knew nothing about the history of the swastika. That was fascinating. Um, just good stuff. So what what you can and what you do is you go to YouTube and then just type in type enter in six know it alls and um, then there's a place where you can register for your ticket. I'll be going there today. Today's episode is the one with me, and um, so it's the best. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Stupid. Um, uh, you pay your money. It's at 2.30 Pacific time. So it'll be 5.30 East Coast time. And then if you can't make it, I would go before, way before 2.30, buy your ticket, and then uh, you'll be able to watch it then or down the road. And so as I was trying to, because I get the information via email, and I thought, well, how are they going to get there? And that's when I went and found it on YouTube. And I believe if you subscribe, you will get a notification every month and it will tell you what they're going to be doing. And this, you know, we all think that we've invented this new or this or that. And I am ever so grateful for the historians in our community that can really make us understand who we are and why we are and what is going on. So the six know-it-alls today, 2.30 Pacific time. All right. So Diane sent me this picture. Oh, Diane. Oh, can we all just give her an applaud right now, please? Just beautiful. Um, I also love that you've included the lanterns that are in the book. I kudos. I, I, I don't, I'm kind of mad at myself that I didn't do that. Uh, so the lanterns are in the book. That's the new book, second edition. And it's a whole lantern quilt, but look how it works in there. Thank you, Diane. And then poor Carol, um, I almost drove her to drinking. Uh, she had a really hard time with this. And then the border wasn't fitting. And I got another email from somebody else about that. And that kind of freaks me out totally. But um, she said she figured it out. 
So I just say, uh, and you did figure it out, Carol. It's absolutely beautiful. Okay, so I say cheers to Carol. You did it. So let's go take a look at our um, interview with Tomasita. I think you will be very impressed. I was. I, I, I just want to say before we go into it, I'm getting to meet people that ordinarily I might not meet or I might be on a showroom floor and you're just kind of passing ships in the night. But with these interviews, I'm getting to know a lot of you. And Tomasita, I think you are beyond dear. So let's take a look here. And it better be the right one so John doesn't have a heart attack. Hello, Tomasita Lagans. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well, Alex. Thanks. I realize I'm doing the short version because I refuse to say the long version because I'll mess it up. <laughs> what is it? Yes. So legally, my name is uh, Tomasita Louvier Lagans, and uh, my children actually go by Lagans. So, yeah, as long as we get in the neighborhood. Okay, I'm stopping it here because I don't have sound. Do you guys have sound? Please let me know. Please let me know. I don't have sound. Um, hmm. Give me a comment, people. You have sound. Okay, we will continue. It must be my dumb computer. Okay. It's going to uh, resume last video. I'm going to start it from the beginning because that was rude. Hello, Tomasita Lagans. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well, Alex. Thanks for inviting me. And I realize I'm doing the short version because I refuse to say the long version because I'll mess it up. <laughs> what is it? Yes. So legally, my name is uh, Tomasita Louvier Lagans, and uh, my children actually go by Lagans. So, yeah, as long as we get in the neighborhood, that's fine. It works. Now, what's really cool is you got a special exhibit in this year at Houston 21, and you curated it with Sharon Mooney, right? Yes, tell, yes. Tell us about it. So what a lucky break. Um, I mean, we are just super excited. Um, Sharon and I are quilting friends. We were at a, a quilt workshop, and... We knew that the exhibit for the suffragettes were going to be uh, celebrated in uh, 2020, the 100 year celebration. And because of uh, COVID, a lot of that had changed. So the exhibits that were going on, there were quilt exhibits, and we were wondering, you know, what African American suffragettes would be included in the exhibit? of quilts that were, you know, being curated by other uh, curators. And we kind of felt that none would be, um, or, you know, of course, not anywhere in the neighborhood of the number of African-American suffragettes that participated uh -huh. and impacted. Uh -huh. And so uh -huh. for a brief moment, I got a little irritated thinking that, okay, here we go again, we're going to be excluded. And then right after that, I was like, what a wonderful opportunity <laughs> to tell, you know, the story yourself. And so Sharon and I uh, talked about it. Um, we uh, got together a list of suffragettes that uh, had participated, African-American suffragettes. And we were like, okay, well, we need to put a call out to Quilt Friends. And then time passed, COVID happened, and still wanted to do the exhibit. And then we just called some friends that we knew could respond real quickly. Well, well wait. Okay, so it's, again, going to be shown at Houston 2021 fall. Okay. When did the call go out? Oh, wow. The call went out, I believe, in November of 2020. Okay, so they had about a year. They had a, well, you got to have it done a little bit before. Um, right. But Alex, you know what happened is that originally we had planned to exhibit in the uh, Folk Life, Texas Folk Life Museum, but because of COVID, we could not. So the Texas Folk Life Museum did a virtual 
um, display of all the quilts for us in the month of uh, like mid-February for African American uh, History Month, Black History Month, and March, Women's History Month. And so after, um, in, and that was in uh, 2021. So then in, uh, I think the Houston call was like, okay, well then we should try to enter into Houston. Not really thinking that, you know, we would <laughs> get in, but you know, a, a, a goal to uh, achieve. And then we uh, got the word that we were accepted and You're like, <laughs> yeah, who, hey, who's sponsoring it? Equilter. No, oh, Luana, thank yes. you. Thank yes, you. thank you very much. And so I looked at the list. I thought maybe I could take her a handwritten uh, thank you, but I'm going to send it to her in, um, in a couple of days. So you are actually going to be at the exhibit, um, uh, Sharon, I assume, too, just to kind of yes. sweep. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so we do plan to uh, be there. We're going to go to preview night mm -hmm. and I uh, did ask Becky if we would be able to do a gallery talk. Um, and so we will probably do our own version of gallery talk Perfect. on uh, Friday. Okay, before we look at the uh, quilts, I got a question for you. How did you research who these suffragettes were? Because that seems like a whole thing in itself. Right. So there was a lot of learning. Um, Sharon um, put together a list of suffragettes and a very long list. So mm -hmm. the quilts that we have, we have 14 quilts and they actually tell, you know, what we feel is a good story, but it is in no way representative of all the African-American women who um, heavily influenced the um, suffragette. I mean, the women's right to vote um, a movement mm -hmm. in, you know, on a national level and in their communities. I mean, can you even imagine, I mean, that, that we couldn't vote? You know what I mean? That's just amazing. In fact, the other day, and I don't really want to go down this rabbit hole, but like a couple hundred years ago, it was like, what percentage of the population voted? It was like 10% men or something like that. I mean, it was crazy, right. crazy. Right. So, so okay. let's look, let's, I've got eight of them. Thank you for sending them <laughs> along. So let's take a look at this first one. And who made this first piece? So this quilt is made by Sharon Mooney. The title is Ain't I a Woman? And the subject of uh, this quilt is Sojourner Truth. Okay. All right. And then the, how big are these quilts about? Are they specific? Oh, no, they're all different, huh? Yeah, they're all different. Um, Sharon's quilt is about 39 by 39. Okay, the one we just looked at, because this, whose the is one this? That you just looked at. Yeah, who, this now, is this yours, right? This particular quilt is uh, made by me, Ooh. and the subject of this quilt is um, Not So Silent Sentinel. This is Mary Church Terrell, who participated in suffrage meetings with Susan B. Anthony and Alice Paul, who are generally um, the women who are noted and, you know, documented in history as, um, you know, the founders of the suffrage movement, movement in America. So um, Mary Church Terrell participated. What struck me about Mary Church Terrell is that, you know, the saying that she has on her quilt uh, discusses you know, the barriers to achieving, um, how far could she have gone um, if her race was not considered? And it felt to me that this was something that she, that could have been said today and very applicable yeah, to today. Yeah. Um, this is, this is kind of like we're talking to kind of in profound verse here, but I just want to comment on your quilt. Um, do you fancy yourself as a, a traditional quilter, a modern quilter? That's a very unique piece <laughs> there we're looking at. I, I don't. I like it all. Me and too. so I, I consider myself just a quilt artist. And whatever 
technique I feel needs to be used is what I use um, to portray what I want in my message of my quilt. So that particular quilt, um, the colors of suffrage were the purple, gold, and white. And the, uh, the black lines show the impact of, um, you know, um, black women on the suffrage movement. And the triangles uh, represent the uh, sorority Delta Sigma Theta who marched in the first woman's um, march in Washington in 1913. Okay, this one. This particular quilt was uh, done during COVID. Uh, this uh, young lady was an apprentice of mine. Her name is Jennifer Steverson. And um, the subject of her quilt is Fannie Lou Hamer. Nice. Okay. Th Wait, this has got to be yours too. <laughs> so this is mine as well. And uh, because of the time period, I wanted to use um, the traditional strip sets, mm -hmm. but I wanted them to um, go back in time. So again, there's the um, the purple, gold, and red. Mm -hmm. And the story of um, Ida B. Wells is that she's a journalist. And um, sh her first forays into um, civil rights was through uh, anti-lynching. And so the men's names that you see there are friends of hers um, that were lynched. And the red bars um, going down, I'm hoping, um, would get the feel of, of lynching. And the saying, her quote, is the way to right wrongs is to turn the light of truth upon them. And um, again, that was said some time ago, but it's very relevant today. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to say, um, not knowing the backstory, that at first you were kind of like, hmm, and then you thought, hmm, what can I do with this? I, that's very inspiring to me personally. Okay, here's another one. All right. So this uh, quilt is uh, done by Lauren Savage, and the subject of it is called The Naysayers. And so um, the African-American suffragettes, they suffered... Um, you know, naysaying from all directions. Um, the white men did not want um, women to participate in uh, the suffrage movement to get the right to vote. Um, the white women, when the African-American women came out to vote, um, it was kind of, you know, more like, we really don't want you to participate. This is the vote for white women only. And then, of course, in their own personal danger, um, they got naysay um, feedback from their family members. So this quilt depicts the personal danger uh, that the African-American suffragettes, and I would even imagine that just the suffragettes, period, um, suffered a lot of pushback on trying to get the right to vote for women. I had the feeling they were not popular. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Okay, well, here's... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah? This quilt is uh, called Texas Queens, and it is by, um, completed by Laura Casmore. And the subject of her quilt are um, suffrage or voting clubs that were established to help African-American um, women learn how to vote or, you know, the power of their vote in their community. So a lot of clubs were formed um, to organize the African-American communities on, um, on voting and the importance of voting. Last but not least, we didn't get them all, but I got eight, so that's pretty darn good. Here we go. Oh, this to me is really different, really different and very interesting. Well, this quilt was done uh, by Cynthia Vaughn, and the title of this one is They Marched Yesterday. 
So one of the organizing um, tools that African American women used was to uh, organize in their communities and um, marching and demonstrating um, was also a tool that was used. So as we know, the uh, suffrage 19th Amendment was uh, ratified in 1920, but it wasn't until 1965 that African American women got to vote in all 50 states. And so that was, you know, something that had to be, you know, you had to march, organize, and, you know, the all of the activities to get the right to vote. And it's actually very relevant today because um, there are 14 quilts in the collection. Um, we also have a quilt that addresses the participation of Stacey Abrams. So even though Fannie Lou Hamer was um, one of the uh, women that we consider a suffragette, but she really organized and marched, uh, talked about the importance of having the right to vote. And here we are, 2021, still talking about the right to vote. I know one thing uh, from a female's point of view, if a female tells me they're not voting, it just, it makes me go wild, just wild, because it's nothing to take for granted at all. So, um, and then to cap this off, Thomasita, you're on a couple boards and you're kind of a president. Tell everybody about that. <laughs> Yes, I am the president of Austin Area Quilt Guild. Austin Area Quilt Guild has been in existence for uh, over 40 years, and currently our guild is uh, meeting through Zoom, so we were able to pivot and still stay together. I am on the uh, Inclusion and Diversity Board um, for the Modern Quilt Guild. Do you, um, I know we talked before we turned on and we're both being very uh, mindful of COVID, you know, um, do you travel and teach and talk and all that good stuff? No. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I just started feeling comfortable um, since I took the vaccine. So um, thank, thanks for the availability of the vaccine to move around a little bit um, freely just a little bit. Yeah. But uh, as far as teaching, I think my teaching comes through my love of doing the quilts to educate. And I'm going to so say your words, your words are beautiful. <laughs> um, and I should have asked you this before. So excuse me. Do you have a website? I do not. I'm working on getting a website okay. because, yeah, one of the things that I would like to continue doing is curating mm -hmm. and uh, getting the message out um, about, um, you know, just things that are going on in the world and telling the story in quilts. I think this is a magnificent um, exhibit that you guys have put together, you and Sharon. And um, send my regards to Sharon. We had a, just a be honest to everybody, we had a little um, communication issue. So Sharon is equally as steeped into this as you are. And so I don't want to any way, you know, shortchange her. So I want to thank you. If I were to be at Houston for a festival, I would come up and I would give you an elbow hug. That's what I would do. <laughs> Thank you have to be careful. I might reach out and actually hug. That's well, problem. that's my issue, too. I probably would. I go, I've been shot at. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been caught hugging. Yeah. Listen, you have a wonderful, uh, uh, a wonderful time. And I will say, do you have any kids that have gotten married? I do. You know the wedding day where you have to just say, be present, be present, be present, be present, and enjoy the accomplishment that you guys have done. I think it's wonderful. Yes, it's Thanks. very wonderful. Thanks, Alice. Thanks, for, um, Alex. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. We did it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay!
Well, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. Tomasita. I think you guys can hear me now, right? Because I want to wrap it up. Yes. Okay. Sound now. Yeah, mute. Turn mute on and that stuff happens. <laughs> I just wanted to say that um, as a child, I his U.S. history just escaped me, okay? And I don't know if it was that I wasn't taught it or I wasn't paying attention or all of that. And to... And as an adult now, to see what we were built on and and all of that is just really phenomenal. And so, Thomasita, thank you so much. I wish you lived next door. I think, I think we would have a wonderful time together. Uh, what you and Sharon did was fantastic, and I am ever so proud is a dumb word. Um, I admire you for rather than being frustrated about a situation to say, you know what, I'm going to be the one that does something about it. So thank you. And with that, with the history of quilting, as well as the history of our nation, don't forget the know-it-alls, the six know-it-alls, because honestly, I am learning so much from them. So, okay, on Friday, oh, I am also, I'm so grateful that those like Thomasita and Lisa Ellis, who is coming Friday, ha are giving us their time so that we who could not be there or were there, I'm going to revisit it, um, can share in the experience. Now, I have a favor of all of you. Because our email situation is so messed up, okay, I'm using nice words, um, I beg of you that when you see things on YouTube, not YouTube, Facebook and all that, please share because these little interviews are too important for our history of who we are and what we're doing today in quilt making. Um, again, Lisa Ellis is on Friday and she did an exhibit. She is with Sacred Threads and she did an exhibit about eyes. And it was really good. It was uh, as soulful and mindful as what we just witnessed here. So have a great day. Um, I'm going to go out and sew maybe two hours, maybe not at all, maybe till midnight. Yeah, doubt that one. I will see you Friday. Oh, the website for the know-it-alls. Irene, what you're going to go do is you're going to go to how I found it this morning was, because I mean, I get it in my email box. I go to uh, go to YouTube, go to YouTube, and then uh, enter in the six six know it alls, and you will see today's event where you can request a ticket. And then there were events below it. If you go, oh, that looks interesting, um, you can get those too. It's it's twelve bucks, and I think it's twelve bucks well spent. So, okay, you're welcome, Rochelle. As Miss Nancy would say, hold up my mirror. I see all of you. Bye-bye.